Hey, my new weekly by perfection setup. That's this green triangle right here on TD Sequential, symbolic.com. Um, you know, I got a scan set up for it that um, I run it yesterday. It brought up 11 new crypto coins that have a pretty good setup. Uh, AVAX, you've got your 913, pretty close proximity here. Um, APT, pretty nice. Dot, 913, close together. That's It worked pretty good over here. Uh, the next week, you got a 14% move back in June. Um, EOS, I'm not, you know, that's... Kind of a China stable coin, I think. But, I mean, you, you did get some movement out of this. I mean, you got 15% out of it back in June. So, I uh, can't knock it, I guess. But uh, most of these, I mean, not all of them are showing. Mana has a 913. It's below the cloud. But uh, Injective has a 913 same candlestick. Uh, that's usually... A pretty strong indicator. You had one real close together right here. You popped on your 9. You got 18%. Your 13 was over here. June 5th. Two weeks later, you got nearly 19% out of it. Um, you know, it could have dollar cost average. Could have bought half on this 13. Bought some more on the 10 week. Or I, call, I call it 10. I guess that'd be your 8. Eight week down. Set. This is seven week. It's eight week. Then your nine is when you got your pop. So you never really know for sure. Your perfect setup is when you get this perfect nine down, and you get your your buy perfection on the nine. Usually, you get it the very next week. Looks like. I mean, you can't say always because nothing nothing works a hundred percent of the time. See, this one didn't. This one didn't work. Uh, this was back in October 10th, which uh, we were still mostly going down on most things. But uh, you go to Zill, um, it's got a pretty good nine set up. You had a 13 over here back in June, but uh, this could keep going down until you get another 13 count somewhere in October. But... Uh, Let's see, sand, sandbox, you got a 913 close together, rel relatively close together. Uh, you know, for the week, it's already up 3%. So, like you go to a daily on some of these, I mean, you're already on a six bar going up. I call it plus six on an up. You're, you're getting into a short sell environment right here getting overvalued already daily so now engine I like engine I bought some engine yesterday on a uh, margin trade uh, not a huge position or anything but um, and I'm not I'm like 3x level you know 3x margin uh, so relatively low risk but and I got a stop loss set, so you know if it goes against me, I'm gonna protect myself just in case. You know, with this with this week being the worst week historically in the stock market history, you just you gotta play it careful. I, I would definitely have a stop loss uh, anytime this week. I mean, look at the uh, S and P daily is on a minus three. It's down almost to 1% today. Not terrible, but it's not, not great either. Um, so I just keep an eye on that. I mean, it could come down to the bottom of this cloud, probably sometime tomorrow. Um, could bounce. If it breaks through and we lose the cloud on a daily basis, and we're going to test this 435. Most likely, um, you're getting into a uh, um, 
getting into a buy situation here. I mean, you're you're undervalued on your S and P. Um, watching silver also, uh, it's set up. It's coming off a daily nine minus nine buy perfection. I should have been watching. I should have bought it. Um, it's not great on a weekly basis, but you might get a day three rally out of it. I mean, most time day three pulls back, but you're already doing that on day two. So that makes me think tomorrow it could could come up to the bottom of this cloud anyway, around 2151. Uh, would be an easy target. I mean, if you just wanted to do like a quick day trade, you can make 25 cents per share on it. I mean, none of this is financial advice. Uh, of course, it's just uh, education purpose only, but your QQQs, kind of the same thing as the S&P. It's, it's on a minus three day. Uh, you haven't lost the cloud yet. Let's look at the IWM. IWM equities. Two, Russell 2000, same thing. You've lost the cloud on it way back over here September 7th you haven't been able to break back you got briefly into the cloud right at the bottom of the cloud right here and then you lost it it rolled back over it's not a real good sign like Gareth is talking like we're, we're kind of getting a a slow rollover here is what it looks like um, I mean, you're definitely, looks like a buy zone, but if you go into a weekly chart, you're on a minus seven. So I'd say another two weeks down, and then you got a good shot. I mean, it can always rally on your eight or, you know, this. it could rally on the seven bar. It could go eight, nine, and then rally on the 10 bar. But I just watch for this time of year, I would look for, most likely a down week this week. Tomorrow is a, a, a Fed FOMC day. So Jerome Powell is going to give a uh, press conference tomorrow. Uh, that could be a definite catalyst for up or down. Um, <clears throat> so we'll keep an eye on that, see what, what happens on that. But. Um, Anyway, just keep an eye on these uh, these nine uh, weekly buy perfections. Is I think Injective has the best setup. I really like this nine thirteen on a on on the same candlestick. Uh, for some reason, that tends to to work a high percentage of the time. Um, you're already up five and a half percent this week. Now you go to a daily, you're on a plus two. You could get a, could get a three bar pullback tomorrow. Uh, just prepare for that, especially if the Fed surprises us with unforeseen news. Uh, it does have a support zone down here at 17 and a half cents. I hope it doesn't go that far. Um, it's probably stopped out before it goes that low anyway. So uh, hopefully it, you know, keeps going. I'd like to see at least hit the test the cloud, maybe around 24, 25 cents. Um, I'd probably take profit, at least sell half, you know, lock in a profit uh, is what I'd do. But um, so keep these on your watch list. We had, we had a 14 of them last week or, you know, last week. Um, now, you know, Floki and Pepe, that's high risk. They're pretty much all high risk. Now, Ethereum looked really good set up. I bought some Ethereum last week. Uh, so far, doing okay. I'm up 1.7%. Uh, if you want to see how everything turned out, you know, Pepe, kind of flat, 1%. Floki, like I say, high risk, 2.5%. Veracity, uh, went up 2.4%. GMT, it's flat, 2.3%. BAL went up 2.4. Gala, 
I really expected more out of Gala. It's up 2.2. STX, it's having a nine, almost a 9% week. That's nice. Uh, ORN, it's flat, 1%. Magic, flat, 1% pretty much. EGLD, pretty much a stable coin, 3%. That's not bad. Atom, it's having a decent week, 8.7. GMX, ooh, nice week on GMX, 12.32. I got some GMX. That's a nice week. Uh, LRC, we're looking at 1.6%. I didn't buy I didn't buy LRC. I bought some GMX, bought some Magic, uh, I bought Gala, I bought some Ethereum, and I got some other ones, but I didn't buy any Atom, I don't think. Um, it's up nearly 9% this week. I probably should have bought some. Um, I think STX would be a decent one too. It's a little, it's a little late. It's already up 9% for the week. It's probably on a deep, nah, it's only on a two bar. You might catch STX on a pullback tomorrow. Get a three bar pullback. Maybe try to dip by it around this 46, 47 cent zone. I may throw in a bit on that. Just see. What I could do with it. Um, this one's been pretty pretty solid most of the year. I mean, it. Eh, I guess I mean kind of sideways. We I mean, had a nice rally in June. Was that twenty three or? Yeah, twenty three. Uh, we had a weekly chart would show it better, but. Uh, let's see. Since twenty twenty three, yeah, it went up, pulled back sideways. It's kind of flat for the year, I guess. Uh, just look at the yearly chart, I guess. Yearly, it's up 136.5%. For <laughs> yeah, I'd say that's a pretty good, pretty good year. Uh, I think every hedge fund manager on Wall Street would bend over backwards. Would probably cut their own arm off to <laughs> to, get, <laughs> to get that kind of percent growth uh, on a yearly basis. That's pretty awesome. Uh, I mean, it's not anywhere near, you know, like Injective has done. I don't know exactly. Let me pull Injective up just for just for the fun of it. Uh, let's look at Binance. Let's go yearly. 487.6% in a year. <laughs> yeah. Now, last year, it went down 84.5%. But the year before that, 103. Uh, don't have any data, I guess, to pull that one. But that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, let's see, I'm on uh, Injective. I got some of that last week. I'm up 6.5% on that. Uh, I got my Game Changer list here. We could go over it, I guess. Um, this is pretty much my portfolio. Let's see where we're at. All right. Four and a half. I don't have Bit yet yet. I need to buy some, but... The six, this Doge, I'm not 100% sold on Doge, but Sheldon's going big on it. He's put 200 grand on a position. There's how much? 2% on Doge. ETH, uh, one and a half. Gala, 2%. Uh, GMX, GMX having a good week. 12%. Make me rich, GMX. Uh, six and a half on Injective, Matic, 4.7, Maker, 0.32, Pyre, Vulcan Forge, there, 1.9, almost 2%. Uh, Render, 2.3, Bruin, almost 4%, Solana, Six and a half. Solana's having a decent week. Uh, for a seven bar. 
that's not going to complete your nine count very good, but I'd still take a nice bounce. I mean, it may not complete your nine, so you may come right back down in uh, <clears throat> October or so. But uh, let's see. What do we got here? Tron, 1.4. That's a weekly. Unibot, it's being difficult. It's down 8.6. That was a bad decision. <laughs> Uh, Ultra, it's up almost 2%. Still not 100% sold on it yet either. So I'm really watching Unibot, Solana, and I mean, I got some Ultra bids in for a Hail Mary, you know, best price probably around this 1375 zone. Be my guess. I'd love to get that 1055 that I had in originally, but. I don't think you're going to get this big of a drop unless you get like some catastrophic news event that hits. Um, I don't think there was one thing I noticed on the uh, commitment of trader report. If I can bring that up right quick on um, let me accept the cookies. Yeah, I wish it was real cookies, but uh, I don't have any cookie. Okay. Ah, uh, let's go to equities, and we'll go to E-mini, go to dealer. You can see the dealers have been selling S&P mini futures since the week of August 29th. I mean, pretty much they've been selling, looks like, nearly all year. They're, they're definitely net short pretty much all year, or at least the last two months, three months anyway. Um, so you go to the table, you look at the spread right here of last week's data, uh, 2.259, the open interest went up, but they're still net short on the dealers. And they increased the spread by 311%. I believe Larry says in his book, Larry Williams, I believe he says in his book, if if you see the dealers or the producers increase the spread uh, by 20% or more to start expecting some kind of movement or some kind of big news event coming up, who knows? I mean, it's, it's it, it, I've seen it work really good for crypto as well, but, um, so we'll keep an eye on that, see what happens this week. There could be some kind of Fed surprise or maybe some kind of jobs data. There's something, you know, there's a Friday, I think Japan's uh, interest rate hike or whatever's coming up. Um, so that could be a big catalyst day. We can get through Wednesday and Friday. We can get through this week. I think we might be okay, but <laughs> uh, that's... This is pretty high risk week to be betting high stakes. It's high, what I call high stakes poker. I mean, you're pretty much juggling rattlesnakes and chainsaw, uh, chainsaws, you know. But so, um, just tread uh, carefully, I guess, or at least use a stop loss if nothing else. But not financial advice. But you do you, I do me. Hopefully, it works out. Um, Let's let's uh, let's look at Bitcoin right quick before we go. Uh, let's pull this up. Bitcoin daily's on a plus seven. Not bad today. One point five. It's up four hundred points. Uh, weekly, it's actually looking pretty bullish. I mean, it's on a plus two. Count going up. Higher high, higher lows. You got a nice buy signal right here off the Williams money flow. You got accumulation. They come in right here sideways. This is a buy trigger point on this week right here that when it went below that green line, that's that's your buy signal. It was it's undervalued right now. That's 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 measured uh, to gold. I, uh, Larry. Williams indicator, his, his will value, Williams value 
indicator. You can set it against bonds or, or the dollar or gold. I chose to, to use gold since gold's had a pretty decent year this year. Um, it's definitely been in the news. Everybody's talking about it. Even, even Gareth's talking about um, he thinks he thinks gold's going to go back up to record highs at some point. Uh, I'm not really seeing on the chart. I mean, daily I could see it. Weekly, I mean, I guess he did really good back in April. Uh, you know, it, did it make a new high? Eh, my GLD hit 191. Um, if you pull the actual chart at gold up on the BZ, yeah, I don't think, uh, no, we're nowhere near. I don't, that's not actual, is it? That's Barrick gold. Uh, you probably need like GS, is it GS? That's Goldman Sachs, GL. I'm not sure what the ticker is for commodities. I'm gonna have to learn these commodities. Here you go, GC under slash one. So yeah, way back, uh, man, you had a perfect 13.9 pre-COVID here, August of 2020. Hit a high of 22.49, almost 22.50, looks like. So we haven't made a new high this year. Hit a high of 22.15. Uh, you know, you tried for it back here in April. Hit 21.43. So you didn't even get above the 22 high. Uh, that's, you're making lower highs and lower lows. I mean, that's, that's a bearish setup to me, but I mean, it could be bottoming out. I mean, long term, I don't doubt you're all, you, could, you could easily draw a trend line right here. Uh, weekly, you do have a buy signal relatively. You didn't get a, a good money flow. I like to see a money flow like this, especially off a nine count on a weekly chart. That usually does pretty good. Now, man, for gold, it went up 1.6%. I mean, that's nothing compared to crypto, but uh, I don't think it has the volatility. Usually... Unless you're coming out of a uh, some kind of recession environment, I don't think you're gonna see a big spike anytime. You got your three bar going up. You got positive three. You got a little bit on GLD paper gold. Uh, I like the silver setup better. It is on a minus one this week. For daily, I like it. You got a good shot at an uptick tomorrow, I think, on silver. Um, being a Fed day, I just, I'm just i not a big fan of trading Fed days or, or prior to Fed days. So, I don't know. I'll probably just sit on the sidelines and let the market kind of calm down and tell me what, which way, which way the wind's blowing. So I'll keep this one short. We'll catch y'all later.